a number of priorities each year, including those on behalf of the city of Cape Girardeau. Our city manager, Scott Meyer, has been an engineer in public service for over 30 years. He's worked with MoDOT, Southeast Missouri State University, and he plans to retire from the city in June following an impressive 12 year career as our top executive. Uh, so we'll be getting started here shortly. We have an audience on Zoom and on Facebook. Uh, to those of you, just go ahead and drop your questions in, in the chat at any time for the Q&A at the end of this brief presentation. Councilman Thomas, the floor is yours. Thanks, Nicolette. And um, I guess before I forget later on, I wanted to thank you for um, setting up these uh, webinars, sessions uh, about our local government so people can tune in or tune back later and find out some of the so what we do, how it works, and uh, some of the background as well as some of our current efforts. Um, today is the most intriguing topic of the um, layers of government um, within the United States. So I'm just gonna give a quick nutshell overview of how they are structured, and then we'll go into some of the examples of uh, specific examples that affect the city of Cape Girardeau. Um, so we have in the United States, a federal government. We have the national government, the US government in Washington, DC that oversees, that is granted the powers that are dictated within the US constitution. Anything not outlined as a power at the federal government within the US constitution is then given to the states and the individual people. That is a federalist form of government. So all, as a U.S. citizen, we are, purview, we are subject to all the um, laws that come out of Washington, D.C. M the Missouri state government has its own constitution and its own set of laws. Now, state governments in Missouri um, divide that power up then to the local level. And so you, as an individual, may not realize it, but you are a um, member of any number of political subdivisions of the state of Missouri. One is the city of Cape Girardeau city government, and that is what the mayor and the city council oversees. Um, you are also a part of the county government of Cape Girardeau County. You're a part of a library district, of a, um, a public health district. There are any, any number of other, a school district that is a division of the power granted by the state. So in that, Yes, we have uh, our charter um, that we adopted in 1981 um, that gives us a certain amount of jurisdiction or authority over the local area. Um, but that is only as is outlined in that charter that was approved by the state. We can only at the local level have uh, or act upon the power and authority that is given to us by the state government. So we are in constant interaction with the state government, especially if there's something that um, is beyond our control, that it has to be legislated at the state level. Um, there's a lot of examples of how this works. In order to effectively govern, all of these layers of government have to work well together. Do they always? I wish I could say that they do, but they don't always, but that is always, that is the goal. Um, and so we sometimes as a city have to go on behalf of all of the residents in the city of Cape Girardeau to Jefferson City to represent our needs, our issues, uh, our concerns, just like us as an individual may go up there, uh, as any one of us as an individual may go, um, to advocate to our representatives in the state government um, for what is best for our city. Uh, we interact, there's, um, the federal level interacts with the state, interacts with the local and all in between. Um, there are agencies, there's the legislative bodies, laws that govern the US laws, state laws. And then we have ordinances and laws that just are over our municipality of Cape Girardeau. Um, there are agencies that write regulations that, that, that are also a form of policy or legislation or laws. And, there's very similar entities um, such as the Department of Health and Human Services at the national level, then interacts with the Department of Health and Senior Services at the state level that then interact with the county health department, which then oversees all of the county and we don't have a health arm of our local. So when the pandemic was rolling out, which we'll probably go to later, that is an example of how 
all of those layers had to work together to get down to the individual at the local level. Um, we at the local level tend to do more of your uh, well-being type legislation, more of uh, more of your streets, your your parks, your collection of your trash, um, uh, your your water, et cetera. Uh, and then it gets more um, of an umbrella the, the farther up you, you go. Um, so we interact with one another. There's lots of examples uh, of how we interact with the state. We can tax as an individual municipality. The state can have their taxes. The federal government, as we all know, can have their taxes. Now, we can't dictate what the U.S. government, we can't overrule a federal government law at the local level or a state law at the local level. We can't change Medicare law. We can't create a new arm of the military or create a new national park. Um, we can't do that at the local level. Now, we can advocate for that just like an individual can, um, but we have to interact with them. And I mentioned the roads a while ago. Not all streets within the city of Cape Girardeau are under the jurisdiction or the management and maintenance of the city of Cape. Some of the most traveled, William Street, Kings Highway, um, are actually under the management and maintenance of the state or MoDOT um, because they are state highways technically. The interstate, we don't control that either. Um, so that's just some examples. And um, I'm gonna hand it over to Scott too here to really go into more of a, some more specific examples of how the different layers of government interact with one another. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much, uh, Councilman Thomas. Uh, he did a really good job of laying out the, uh, the, the jurisdictions and, and how uh, each is a subdivision of the other. And in fact, uh, the city really has no power without uh, the power that's given to us by the constitution of the state and the subdivision through the uh, state through the state legislature. So that's uh, where our um, our powers come from. And, and then, uh, as he mentioned, we uh, passed a charter in the 80s, which is kind of like our own uh, constitution that, uh, that dictates how we go about uh, governing and how the council goes about governing. So that's, that's really important and, uh, and really important to understand the context of all of that. Uh, certainly, um, you know, government is different than business in, in, in the fact that businesses uh, are oftentimes in competition with other businesses in order to uh, make a profit. Um, in, in government, we aren't in competition with anyone. In fact, probably our biggest goals are to be in cooperation with others, with other, with other parts of the government or with private entities or with uh, public-private entities uh, who, who work together then to make things more efficient uh, by, by not duplicating uh, things where we're able to be more efficient and more effective at what we do uh, for less tax dollars. And so that's oftentimes our goal is, is to do that. And a lot of that is, uh, is through that cooperation. Uh, legislatively, we, we also, uh, as uh, Councilman mentioned, we, we do advocate um, and, and provide information. We don't really advocate for a certain vote, but we do provide information regarding things that are in the legislature. One of the things that we've been working on recently is um, a fix for uh, what we call Senate Bill 5 and Senate Bill 572, which were um, laws that were state laws that were passed earlier in, in previous years that, that as they have worked their way out into the, into the cities, have caused us some problems in policing, uh, in our courts, and in the, in the world of accountability. And so we have advocated that um, they need to look at that and look at better at some other ways, maybe to make uh, citizens accountable uh, for things. And so, um, for instance, a lot of our nuisance violations and and things, um, we were not allowed to uh, issue warrants on those. And so. If somebody just ignores it, then what? You know, then how do we how do we enforce that? And so that's that's something that uh, that we've been asking uh, for some relief on, and and other types of policing where uh, we cannot detain people for certain things that in the past we were able to and and uh, hold people accountable. 
And so that's made the job of, of local uh, policing, local accountability uh, for things that our council has passed as ordinances um, more difficult. And uh, so uh, that's some, just one example of how uh, the state, when they were trying to solve problems when they passed uh, those bills and in some of those uh, parts of those bills, they, they did help things, but uh, there are those unintended consequences sometimes that uh, that happened. And so we then feedback with them and try to improve uh, that law all the more. Another issue that's really going on uh, right now is, uh, is uh, what we call the Wayfair Bill. Um, several years ago, the Supreme Court uh, had a ruling regarding uh, the collection of taxes on internet sales by Wayfair um, in that state. Um, they ruled that um, you can collect uh, state and local taxes, that, the, that an internet company can, can be uh, held to that account and have to do that if it meets certain criteria. So um, our state legislature has yet to pass what that criteria looks like. Now this year they're very close and uh, hopefully we'll work through that. But certainly we've seen that in our, uh, in the, during the recent pandemic, uh, you know, a lot of those uh, companies, Amazon, Wayfair, have done extremely well uh, during this time and uh, whose sales have just skyrocketed. And during that time, really, they've also had an unfair advantage. You know, we believe in, in competition and having fair competition, but when, uh, but when there's an unfair advantage to a company who uh, doesn't have to pay the local and state sales tax, uh, that makes it uh, very, um, uh, you know, a, a very difficult thing, we think, for those companies who are using our infrastructure, who are using our streets, who are uh, using um, our, uh, uh, our other infrastructure in order to deliver those goods and to, uh, to use those goods. So uh, we would like to see that uh, remedied. And so that's another thing that with the, us in the state working together, uh, trying to come up with uh, ways uh, to improve and um, make things more efficient, and in this case, I believe more fair um, in, in, in this realm. Uh, we believe people have changed how they're going to buy now in the future, and uh, we believe that's a fundamental difference that uh, as, as a city, we would be um, irresponsible if we didn't uh, try to address it. Um, some of the other things that uh, have happened uh, that uh, we talked about uh, the pandemic as as the councilman pointed out, we have um, uh, our uh, health department uh, in our city. Uh, the city of Cape did not choose to have its own health official. Uh, we sent, uh, chose to be underneath the county health so that we could have consistent um, uh, policy throughout the county. We think that's good and fair for businesses to have one single and consistent policy. Uh, so all of our uh, decisions of that have been at that county level and the county health board of course has been uh, the center of that but some of the things you may not see is that behind uh, behind those uh, uh, policies uh, are regular meetings we uh, at first had daily meetings uh, even through the weekends where our uh, we called it the EOC the emergency operations command would come together every day and talk about where we were on on cases and caseloads and testing and all those those factors and and uh, would discuss how we could implement and how we could uh, enforce and how we could could uh, encourage and educate and uh, those things were done daily. Now then, as it's begun to wind down, we're down to uh, we're just meeting once a week now. But still, those those uh, meetings are important and the coordination and cooperation has been very good. And I think for the most part, we've had a pretty good balance between that safety of people and their and uh, how they stay safe and keep our co case loads low and then yet keeping our economy strong and our economy able to still be vibrant and work and those are competing values that uh, that were hard to balance but it was those conversations that we had that helped us to balance those and to move forward so that's that's an important part of what's happening with uh, the pandemic uh, certainly, we uh, have a, a, an outstanding relationship with the county, uh, not only on that, but also on 911, on uh, computer-aided uh, dispatching, 
uh, on the whole health issue, on uh, community paramedics, we've been talking about that, on GIS, uh, transit, uh, we, we also work with the county on, and then through development agreements and TDDs and TIFs, all of those are worked uh, through the county as well. Uh, our last partner, and then I'll stop talking about talking much, we can uh, maybe have some questions, is regarding the uh, university. We uh, do spend uh, a lot, uh, we, we are fortunate, we have a great town gown relationship with our university. Uh, we work together uh, with the Show Me Center and the building of that and the operating of that. We, we have a board that helps operate that, that has uh, both university and uh, city representatives. Same thing with the River Campus, it was built. We uh, shared funds to build that, and then uh, we operate it with, uh, with the same type of board. Uh, Kapahaw Field, we recently partnershiped on turfing that field and, uh, and worked together on that. We've built uh, sculptures together, uh, art events, and, uh, and we worked with the CVB uh, for events coming to town, such as the vol state volleyball tournament and uh, other things like that as well as uh, training and other uh, shared ways of going about things. Uh, also, the most recent is we, uh, we work together on a flight school out of our airport, uh, where we are, uh, the university is bringing in a flight school and we are running them uh, some property uh, in our, uh, one of our hangars. And uh, that's a great benefit for both the university and the city. So uh, I'll stop there and uh, we'll be willing to, I'll, I'll kick it back to, uh, to, Congress, uh, to Councilman Thomas, and, and uh, then we can ask some questions. Yeah, thanks, Scott. I, <clears throat> you really called to light a lot of the ways in which uh, the, the, not only that the, the state and the local governments interact, but then also how one decision made at one level affects the other level, like Senate Bill 5, and how that then affects our ability to govern locally and then we hope that we work in concert with them so that there isn't ever uh, a disparate um, opinion or uh, a disadvantageous uh, form of government that then is either handed down or handed up. Um, we, uh, you know, in, in certain respects, you know, sometimes bills are passed at the federal level um, that then <clears throat> creates a requirement at the state level or create at the state level makes a requirement at the local level but doesn't have the funding mechanism with it. And so that's what we call an unfunded mandate. And so we then have to have the burden of providing that service without the budgetary money to go uh, provide it. Cause that in essence is what government is there to do is to provide services for the individuals, the citizens, the taxpayers. And then how do we get that money that provides those services is through the taxes that we have not only at the local level, the state level or the, the federal level. Um, so it's really sometimes a zero sum game. If you add a new slice of the pie, how are you gonna fund that? And that is the constant battle um, that we have or the efforts that we undertake to try to create a balanced budget, especially at the local level. Um, and then as a representative form of government on the council, um, we wanna make sure that your tax dollars that you're paying in are providing the services that you want and need um, at the local level. Um, and that we try to capitalize on all of your tax dollars that are also going to the state level and at the federal level to bring as much of them back here, back home as we can. So it'll directly affect you. We are blessed, like you said, to have um, great relationships with uh, all of the other um, political subdivisions uh, in the area, the county, the state, et cetera. Um, it's uh, not all areas have that. Um, and sometimes it's a battle just to undertake the smallest initiative. I mean, a great example of that uh, that um, we had talked about before was the uh, the diverging diamond, all the construction going on, and how that is a great example. I mean, it's greatly impacting people's lives between Jackson and Cape, but it's a, a great example of how we interact with MoDOT, interact with Jackson, interact with the county, and at the city level, provide all the services that we need to in order to make that an effective interchange and, and update it and bring it. Um, into the 21st century, but we are blessed and I want to thank all of our partnerships that we have with at all of the levels. Um, it, it really makes all of our jobs best and the people that ultimately benefit from that are all of the individuals and the citizens. And so 
just wanted to end on that note. And I don't know if um, Nicolette has any uh, questions that have come in or anything else that we failed to hit on. Well, we did get a, uh, a few questions. So before I get to those, just a quick reminder to our audience that if you're watching on Facebook or Zoom, go ahead and drop your questions in the chat and we'll get to those. If you're watching the replay, don't forget to reach out to us on social media, by phone, email, however you would like to connect. Um, so uh, you talked about how we work to bring some of those uh, taxpayer resources back home to Cape Girardeau. And that was the nature of one of our questions from Southeast Missourian reporter, Jeff Long. Um, Mr. Meyer, I don't know if we want to give this one to you first. He asks, the American Rescue Plan, H.R. 1319, became law March 11th, and the city of Cape is due to receive, he says, about estimate $75 million. Has the money been received, and what is the plan for its use and distribution? Mr. Meyer, would you like to take that one? Sure. Um, the money has not been received yet. The, um, my understanding is that we will get half of that money probably in upcoming uh, weeks, um, but we have not received it yet. It will be uh, wire transferred. And uh, so we're looking for it, but uh, have not received. Um, the, the original original guidance that, that I've seen from that had uh, five areas that it talked about its use. Um, so we've read through those. Uh, it's a pretty general uh, discussion of those items. Uh, typically with this, we, what happens is uh, the legislation contains some general guidance and then it is followed up by agencies, whoever will be um, administering and then ultimately auditing uh, the use of those funds will come out with guidance with some more um, specific guidance regarding uh, each of those areas. So we anticipate over the, over the next few months, uh, typically, um, they will begin to issue additional uh, guidance and, uh, and restrictions in, in that. The problem with uh, getting too far ahead of yourself is sometimes money gets spent and then uh, in the audit, um, they, they come back and say, no, you couldn't spend it for that. Um, and then uh, you, you end up uh, having to pay that back on the taxpayer's dollar and we're careful not to do that. Thank you for that. Um, another thing that we were talking about was with all these different layers of government, all these massive projects, all these massive programs, it's a lot to take in. And we've covered a lot of ground, I think in what about 25 uh, minutes here. Um, just a parting thought before we, we're uh, wrapping up the webinar here today. What's important for folks to understand right now? What do we need solutions for right now? Um, I guess what I always, I always revert back to not to be cliche, but, um, democracy is not a government of the people. It's a government of the people that are engaged. And so to stay engaged with us at the local level, um, also your representatives at the state level, and then also at the federal level, but you can use each of those layers to interact with one another. But stay knowledgeable of what's going on and then stay in communication with us on city council with your representatives so that we can make sure we're representing your need your needs or any other your church or your school or your um your place of employment whatever those needs are um because if we don't know what those uh issues or needs or concerns are then we uh, can't make sure that they're the most adequately represented in the grand scheme of the whole city uh, uh, and what we have to do to make sure that the city of Cape continues to run can, and more importantly continues to thrive uh, here forward. So um, we have, we've outlined several just to get specific and not just completely cliche dodge question Nicolette, but uh, there's, uh, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of key issues. Um, Mr. Long question about the money coming in for recovery. That is an issue that's impacting, that, I mean, the last year and COVID is impacting everyone. And to have those resources, how will they be able to be uh, best utilized is a big issue. Um, ongoing initiatives, you know, the, beyond the ones that we, ones that we talked about. Um, uh, there's, you know, we, we've mentioned it a couple of times and this is a great in, example of an interaction, but we talked about uh, docking facilities downtown and how that could renew the vibrancy of downtown and continue it moving forward. 
that would has to be an interaction at the federal level in the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and at the state level and at the local level. So that is going to be a great partnership um, opportunity that we have uh, moving forward. But I guess that the the best uh, example I have is just how we can all pull together to get us through the pandemic and its effects and then keep us moving forward from there and beyond as we go. Yeah, I think that's an excellent uh, um, observation. And uh, only just to add to that, that that we, we need to be sure we look deeply into uh, everything we do. So, um, you know, kind of one place we are right now as a city is that, that we, we've done a lot of infrastructure uh, improvements and facility improvements and uh, really backing that up with good uh, preventive maintenance uh, and uh, operating. So we operate and maintain at a high level to keep those investments uh, usable and competitive so that they can continue to pay off is really important. And, uh, and sometimes we, you know, that's not the, the most uh, fun thing to do. The most fun thing is to build the new. And, uh, but uh, keeping our eye on that is really important as we move forward. Uh, we kind of, uh, one thing we've, we found uh, not too long ago was that we'd kind of let uh, our Shawnee fields uh, go downhill a little bit and the parking lot was breaking up. And we came in and we, we repaved the parking lot and we redid the fields. And now then they're back at that, uh, that competitive level uh, where we can get, uh, get those uh, tournaments from all over the United States. And that's so important and we need to make sure to keep our eye on that. Outstanding, thank you both for your uh, comments today, your presentation and, and the Q&A. Uh, we don't have any more questions, so that's it for our webinar today. Um, we hope to catch all of you next time, April 26, 1 p.m. We're gonna talk about civic duty and involvement, which was kind of a key takeaway from today. Please stay engaged with your um, local elected officials and, and city staff. Um, we're very accessible online and off. Um, just call us at 339-6320 or find us right here on social media and elsewhere. Um, you can register or watch One Cape webinars at cityofcape.org slash One Cape webinar. And thank you to our guests and audience for being with us today. Y'all have a great day. Thanks, Nicolette. Thanks.